Pressure is mounting on President Biden to end his re-election campaign after his shaky debate performance last week. The first elected Democrats are publicly talking about their concerns and the Biden team is scrambling to control the damage. The Hill's Niall Stanis joins us to discuss. Niall, during a donor event yesterday in Virginia, Biden said his busy travel schedule leading up to the debate was the reason he looked so bad. Yeah, I mean, not a particularly persuasive argument, I don't think, given that he had been back from travel for a long time uh, before the debate took place. There have been a number of explanations offered by uh, the White House or the Biden campaign or the president himself for that disastrous debate performance. The most frequent one being that he had a cold. Now we're on to the travel uh, argument. Look, I mean, the basic fact is an 81-year-old man had a very bad debate performance that sharpened doubts about his mental acuity. I don't think there's any effective uh, excuse to get around that. Yeah, the truth is he had been back from his foreign travel for nearly two weeks and spent six days at Camp David with a pretty light schedule, right? Yes, exactly. I mean, he had plenty of rest. That is not to take away from the fact that foreign travel can be exhausting for anybody, especially a man of the president's age. But the argument that the one thing, the foreign travel, affected the other, the debate performance, seems pretty specious, to be perfectly honest, given that there was that long period that you just outlined from one to the other. One of the complaints we've been hearing from top Democrats is that Biden hasn't has been relatively quiet since the debate. He's not really out there pounding the pavement, speaking to elected officials and the press about why he should remain the candidate. Yeah, we do hear that criticism, and I think the answer to it is fairly clear. I mean, the argument is that the president should be put in more unscripted moments to prove his uh, mental vigor. Now, the danger, of course, is in any unscripted moment, there is the danger of him wandering off script in a damaging way. And he has very little uh, room to play with here, given that the debate performance was so bad. A gaffe in an unscripted moment right now could be absolutely catastrophic at a time when we already see some elected Democrats suggesting that the president should step aside or that other candidates would be better or that Biden remaining in the race almost guarantees a Trump victory. After initially expressing public support for President Biden, former President Barack Obama is now reportedly voicing concerns about Biden's debate performance in private conversations. What is he saying? Well, what we know from the Washington Post report, which is the only place that has reported this, is that the former president is concerned about President Biden's standing in the election <laughs> race. Uh, it's no surprise that the uh, former president has some skepticism about that. He has been, I think, um, less pro-Biden than other people for uh, quite a long time, and of course famously preferred Hillary Clinton over uh, Joe Biden in 2016, uh, with the results that we all saw. But uh, President Obama apparently concerned that uh, the race could be moving in the wrong direction from the Democratic perspective. We're also hearing from former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, another influential voice in the Democratic Party. She says questions about Biden's health are legitimate. Where does she stand? She does say that. She preceded that remark by various comments about President Biden's uh, mastery of the legislative elements of power and pushing legislation through throughout this first term. But the mere fact that Pelosi wanted to or decided to suggest that it was a legitimate question uh, around, you know, whether President Biden was perhaps suffering from some condition is obviously significant in itself. She's a major, major name in the party, despite having stepped aside as speaker and somebody who would normally be expected to be pretty loyal to Biden. While Biden's team maintains that he's staying in the race, speculation is rampant over candidates to replace him. Vice President Kamala Harris is one of those names. She hasn't been exactly widely praised during her time as VP, but are Democrats now coming around to the idea that she might be a better option than Biden? I think they are to a degree, basically because Biden's fortunes have fallen so precipitously in the wake of that debate. If you think, I don't know, if you, if you think Joe Biden had a 5 out of 10 chance of winning and Kamala Harris had a 6 out of 10 chance of winning, uh, then it's not worth the turmoil of swapping one for the other. But if Biden is down at a 20% or 30% chance of winning, that changes the whole dynamic. There are other candidates who I think in an ideal world Democrats might prefer, 
But the difficulty would be if President Biden stands aside and you give it to some other candidate who's not the vice president, then you've essentially taken away the nomination from a black woman. And that's very problematic, particularly in the Democratic Party constituency. Yeah, and one of the keys to determining Biden's fate could be the post-debate polling. Each day we're getting more results. What are the trends you're seeing? Broadly, I think we're seeing uh, President Biden losing a little bit of ground to former President Trump, roughly in the realm of a couple of points. Now, in a close election, that could obviously be the whole ball game right there. We do have to say that not every poll is uh, sending the same signal. There have been some where the gap between Trump and Biden has remained the same. But the underlying reaction to the debate is clearly a sharpening of the concerns about President Biden's age. A lot of the hand-wringing on the part of Democrats is because they say the re-election of Donald Trump is a threat to democracy itself, but at least one Democrat is trying to tamp down those concerns. Main Congressman Jared Golden penning an op-ed saying that he thinks Trump is going to win and he's okay with it. Strange argument from a Democrat, but what's he saying? A very strange argument from a Democrat and one that I think we have to underscore is, is very unrepresentative of the party as a whole. But the congressman from Maine is in essence arguing that fears that a second Trump term would fundamentally erode American democracy are overplayed, that they are overhyped, that if uh, Trump wins, that'll be not to Golden's political liking, but that it would sort of um, endanger the republic. That's his argument, I mean, clearly for many, many Democrats, both elected officials and Democratic voters the prospect of a second Trump term is just cataclysmic. We've been focused a lot on how Democrats are contemplating the Biden issue. Let's also talk about how Republicans view this. There have been some in the party urging Biden's cabinet to invoke the 25th Amendment to remove Biden from office, which is unlikely to happen. But others say Biden is the candidate they want to face in November. What's going on in the GOP as they watch Democrats struggling to figure this out? I think the suggestion of the 25th Amendment is really a political messaging issue. Uh, you know, Republicans trying to suggest that President Biden is simply incapable and should be removed. That's an argument that you can make, but it's not an argument that is going to be uh, realized in terms of his removal from office. In terms of who they would rather face, I think generally from what I'm hearing, the Trump campaign and other Republicans would prefer to face President Biden, whom they believe they could beat. Any other candidate would at the very least introduce an element of uncertainty into the picture. All right, that's all I got. Niall Standage, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks. Starting next month, the FDA will ban the use of a soda additive over health concerns. The Food and Drug Administration announced brominated vegetable oil will no longer be allowed in food products. The vegetable oil is used in soda to keep citrus flavoring from floating to the top of drinks, according to the FDA. Bromated vegetable oil has been linked to nervous system damage, headaches, and fatigue, according to the nonprofit organization Environmental Working Group. In the FDA's proposal, the agency cited a 2022 study that found when the food additive was given to rats, its derivatives accumulated in the heart, liver, and fat. The new rule will go into effect August 2nd. Companies will have one year to reformulate and relabel products. That's today's Daily Debrief. I'm Drew Petromo. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to The Hill's YouTube channel. And come back here soon for the intersection between politics and policy.